here we have the third puzzle, the hospital staff from the great book of puzzles and teasers by George J. Summers. Solutions are by me, Abhishek Lapani. So, let's try to solve this. So, it's in um, double quotes, I think someone is saying these things. The hospital staff consists of 16 doctors and nurses, okay, including me, all right. The following facts apply to the staff members, whether you include me or not, does not make any difference. The staff consists of, so basically, these four statements would still be same if we do not include the person, the speaker. And the speaker himself or herself is a part of the hospital staff, all right. So, it says more nurses than doctors, first one is more nurses than doctors, second more male doctors than male nurses, third more male nurses than female nurses, fourth at least one female doctor. Having said that, there is one thing which is quite sure and that is all these staff members here are either doctors or nurses and either males or females. So, we can have male doctors, male nurses, female doctors, female nurses. So, I need to allot four variables basically to make a kind of, I will have to make an equation, right, an algebraic equation, a linear equation basically. So, how will I do that? So, let me <coughs> try to classify people into four divisions, two by two divisions. So, basically, if this row denotes male, whoever I put here will be male, Whoever I put in the second row will be a female. Whoever I put in the first column would be a doctor. Whoever I put in the second column would be a nurse. You know why I did this? Why did I did this? The reason is simple because I want to make my life simple. <laughs> so basically, <coughs> now instead of writing these things down, which you can also do, I did this way so that there is no confusion at all. So whenever we have to classify people in two different ways, two by two matrix is the best way possible. So basically now I know male doctors, all these, the number of male doctors is A, the number of male nurses is B, the number of female doctors is C and the number of female nurses is D. So far, so good. What else do we know? We know that the sum of A, B, C and D must be equal to 16, right? That is what we know. More nurses than doctors, more nurses than doctors. How many nurses do we have? B and D, B plus D is the number of nurses, male nurses, female nurses, essentially they are nurses. They are more than doctors, okay. So, B plus D must be greater than A plus C, wow. From the first statement, we can say that. From second, we can say more male doctors than male nurses. Male, this is the row for male doctors, nurse A, B. So, A male doctors are more than B male nurses, perfect. Then it says more male nurses than female nurses. If we see here a, a, a connecting link, here we have male nurses, here we have male nurses. They are more than female nurses. How many female nurses do we have? Female nurses, D. That means this should also be there. So this statement I, uh, I, I, I realize from second and third. Perfect. Fourth is at least one female doctor. We have C female doctor. So C must be at least one. That means it should be greater than or equal to 1. Nice. Just for the sake of reference, I'll also write from where <coughs> I wrote these statements. This has come from statement number 1. This has come from combining statement number 2 and 3. This is from statement number 4. And this is given in the question. All right. So I have noted down all the data in a more understandable way. <coughs> what needs, what can I do now? Everything is in variable, I have no constants, you know, adding constants or doing any mathematical operations on constant is an easier task than doing it on a variable, right. I can see one thing that C is at least 1, so I can assume C to be 1, 2, 3 and so on, let's see what happens. Okay, so let me make a table. I'll make a table and what all things should be there in the table, let us try to understand that first. So, I am going to have, I am going to calculate things depending on the value of C. As I told you already, that's why I took C first of all. C will be my standard variable or I can say C, C will be my independent variable. Based on the value of C, I'll be able to calculate the values of A, B and D. So, let's write A, B, 
be in this way, the reason is simple because it is very easy for us. As we know that A, B, D are in descending order. This is descending order. Descending order that means A, B and D cannot be same. Okay, That is something which we under should understand. And this is the unique point of this question. These are distinct, distinct numbers. In fact, natural numbers because we cannot, we cannot have fractional people or negative people, right? Distinct natural numbers as they're in descending order. They can't be equal. But yeah, C can be equal to either A, B, or D. That is for sure. Okay. So far, so good. So all these things we know now. What else do you think we require here? Okay. We need to compare B plus D and A plus C as well. Mm. Okay. B plus D and A plus C. Here we have A plus C, then we have B plus D. Okay, let me do one thing. I'll write um, A plus C over here and B plus D over here. And that is how I'll be able to compare this. Moreover, A plus C should be smaller than B plus D. So I'm writing things in descending order. So why not do it the same way? This is very important. If you are watching this video, make sure that everything I say will be making sense and improving your speed, retention, accuracy at the same time. So if I'm following the descending order approach, so let me have everything descending order only. So obviously A plus C is less than B plus D. So I'll write B plus D first and then A plus C. It doesn't really matter, but that will be easy for me to absorb, identify and analyze the data, right? That is the best way to write data. And why C first? I'm repeating again because C for me is the independent variable based on the values of C, I'll put on other values because C has to be at least one. I'll put C as one, two, three, four, and let's see till where we go. <coughs> Perfect. Do I need any other column? I think here yeah, just for keeping, if I, if I keep on changing the value of C, let's say if I keep C as one, C as one, then A plus B plus D must be 15. C will be one. If C is two, A plus B plus T must be 14. So let us have a column for A plus B plus D. So far, so good. Once I have written that, I'll put C as one. That's just an assumption. The moment I put C as one, A plus B plus D must be 15. Nice. Great. What now? What now? A plus B plus D is 15. And A, B, D are in descending order. Perfect. Also, we know that B plus D must be greater than A plus C. By the way, the sum of these two, these two will always be, I'll just write here. Wait, I'll just change the ink so that you don't get confused. The sum of these two columns, one, two, three, four, fifth and sixth column, the sum would always be 16, isn't it? It is given in the question. Cool. It will be very easy for us to divide things. So if B plus T has to be greater than A plus C, what does that mean? 16. If I take equal halves, 8 and 8 each, hmm, they are same. I need to increase B plus T. So 8 and 8 each, let's increase. So B plus D, 8, A plus C, 8, not possible. Then it cannot be same. B plus D has to be greater. That means if I increase B plus T by one unit and decrease A plus C by one unit, I'll get 8. I'll get 9 and 7. So basically, the first value that I can get is that B plus T must be 9 and A plus C must be 7, which also gives us <coughs> enough idea that the maximum value A plus C can assume is 7. That's for sure. The maximum value that A plus C can assume is 7, isn't it? The moment it goes beyond 7, let's say A plus C becomes 8, then B plus D will also become 8. Inequality won't be satisfied. If I take A plus C as let's say 9, B plus T becomes 7. Inequality doesn't satisfy. B plus T has to be greater than A plus C. Obviously, I can have A plus C as 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all that stuff is there. But let us try to put in values depending on what I have written right now. A plus B plus T must be 15. And here it says A plus C is 7. And I took C as 1. So A plus C is 7. That means A plus 1 is 7. So it means that A is 6, isn't it? 1, 7, 6 plus 1 is 7, cool. 6. Now, 
if a is 6, b plus c must be 9 and b has to be greater than d. So if I put b as 5 and d as 4, wow, my life, life seems very solid. 5 plus 4 is 9. Perfect. Such a nice arrangement. Can I do anything else? Can I, can I, like, like if, I, if I put a as 6, b plus d is 9 and b has to be greater than d. And b is 5 and d is 4. That means the minimum value b can take is 5, maximum d can take is 4. Can I do anything else? If I reduce d by, let's say, if I, if I take d as 3, for example, then b will be 6, keeping all these things constant. Like this is 1, this is 6, 9, 7, 15. If I do that, then this is 6, this is 3, 6 and 3. b must be greater than d satisfied but a must be greater than b not satisfied so that means if i if i take the first consideration where i fix c as 1 and a as 6 i can have only one possibility which is this i cannot have any other possibility when c is 1 and a is 6 because that will be violating the rule which rule which rule that a must be greater than b must be greater than d Perfect. What next? Can I do anything else? Obviously, I can do one thing. So, as I told you, that keeping C as 1 and A as 6, only one possibility is there. What if I keep C as 1, C as 1, okay, which means A plus B plus B 15, that is fixed. And what if I uh, take A plus C as 6, and b plus d as 10. That is a possibility, right? Because b plus d has to be greater than a plus c. The next possibility, 10 and 6. So far, so good. Now, it's if I took c as 1 and a plus c is 6, that means a will be 5. Nice. Let's put 5 over there. This is 5. a plus b plus d is 15. a is 5 itself. What can be the value of b plus d? It's 10. So, if I divide 10 in two different parts, which need to be distinct, distinct so i cannot have 5 plus 5 i should have 6 plus 4 7 plus 3 something like that something like that so if i put 6 and 4 or 7 or 3 8 or 2 and so on i am violating the essential condition that a must be greater than b a here is 5 b cannot cannot go beyond 5 so all these conditions are invalid and i cannot take b as 5 and d as 5 because again this will be invalid so what does that mean that means that keeping C as 1, we don't have any possibility except when A is 6. This is also an invalid case. I just hate those invalid cases. <laughs> well, so you must have realized that if C is 1, we can have only, only, only one possibility, that is this. Let's see what happens if C is let's see if c is 2 then a plus b plus d must be 14 because sum of a plus b plus d and this should be yours a plus b plus c plus d is 15 okay sum here is 16 that's great nice nice so let's take the same certain the same things again sum 16 b plus c must be greater than a plus c so 9 and 7 the same thing which i took here no need to get confused by this time if you have listened everything clearly carefully there's no confusion but if you tend to forget or not pay attention you might be forgetting take a pause take a deep breath come again repeating 9 7 perfect 9 7 is what i have okay b plus d is 9 a plus c is 7 if a plus c is 7 and c is 2 then a must be 5 moment a is 5 and b plus d is 9 9 Keeping B greater than D, I can have 5 comma 4. 5 plus 4 is 9. 6, 3, 7, 2. But you can see there that A has to be greater than B. Not possible anywhere, guys. That means this case is also invalid. Wow. So many invalid cases. Obviously, because the question has only one answer, it will be only one satisfaction. The moment you get the first satisfactory uh, assumption, you should stop doing this question. You know why? Because 
what is the sex and occupation of the speaker, there has to be an answer. If not, cannot be determined. If there's an answer, it must be a unique answer. So the moment I realized this, I, I, I got my answer. But just to show you at how these things happen, I'm just trying to portray each and everything. By now, you must have realized that I have put CS2, all the cases got um, <coughs> invalid. But take CS3, these things will increase more. Let's say if C is 3, C is 3, A plus B plus B becomes 13. And this guy is 9, 7 again, just to keep on you know, looking, say, uh, showing the same things. C is 3, C is 3, A plus C is 7, so A will be 4. Now, B plus B is 9, can I break it 9 in such a way, I can take 5, 4, case invalid, because A has to be greater than B. 6, 3, whatever I take, it will be invalid. So basically, we have only one, the first case that is true. Nice. Now we know. Now we know. <clears throat> that A is 6 for sure, B is 5 for sure, C is 1 for sure, and D is 4 for sure. Cool. But who is the speaker? Yet to identify. A speaker will be someone from A, B, C, or D. Right, that is for sure. If I take speaker as C, so it says whether you include me or not does not make any difference. If I take speaker as C, then this will make all the difference, isn't it? If speaker is C, then the fourth statement will get invalidated. At least one female doctor. So if I am the only female doctor and I say if you don't include me, then also this will be satisfied. It will be invalid because at least one female doctor is only me. Then this fourth statement will be invalidated because I am the speaker. Even if I am not the part of this, this entire group, this should be correct. That means I am not the female doctor, not in C. Which of the following can be changed? Can be changed. C is not there. What can be changed? A, B or D so that it does not really matter and all the conditions are still validated. Do we have something like that? Do we? Yes or no? Hmm. What can be done? What can be done? 1, 6, 5, 4. If I, let's say, let's say, <coughs> by the way, see, if I, if, I, if I assume that person, the speaker to be from B, the moment one person goes from here, this becomes 4, then 4 and 4 are equal. Not possible. The moment I take that one speaker from the group of A, that is male doctors, then this becomes 5, 5, 5 are equal. This case becomes invalid. So if I take, if I assume the speaker is one of the people from D, this becomes 3. All the cases are still valid. Because if I, if I assume the speaker is this, this is the speaker, then, then, if I don't include the speaker, this D will not be 4 but 3 and still everything will be satisfied. So A will be greater than B and will be greater than D. I can keep, I can take the speaker to be this. So 6, 5, 3, all things will still be valid. That means the speaker is someone from D. A female nurse. Sex is female. Occupation is nurse. I hope you enjoyed this solution. Such a beautiful problem from George Summers book. Do enjoy it. Tell me in the comments. This is such a nice problem. I'll meet you in the next puzzle. Stay tuned.